guys welcome back to my channel welcome back to my kitchen today is kind of a rainy day so I'm sorry if the lighting is all over the place today but I am going to be doing three easy 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 freezer meals and I'm gonna be doing them in 9 by 13 pans that are disposable I just feel like this is a great thing to have on hand whenever um, you are on a busy day or just your day gets all turned around it's an unexpected day and you can still land with supper on the table I'm also glad to be back I kind of took a little break this past week and didn't post any videos it was super good for me and of course just connecting with my family all of that kind of stuff Stuff. you got to take breaks every once in a while so I'm glad to be back I know there was a lot of you that sent me messages just checking in to see if I was okay and I'm t I am definitely okay um, just needed a little break so anyways without further ado I think I'm going to go ahead show you what I got to make everything and all three dinners that we're gonna be making today are gluten-free and definitely on the healthy side a lot of you have been asking me recently if I've still been doing keto because um, I have done a lot of keto and yes I am um, through this whole time of the craziness that our world has been in and just the extra stress and stuff I didn't like stick to it hundred and ten percent but I am still on that track and if you are somebody that eats more low carb you could definitely make a little bit more changes to these they're not extremely low carb the one is um, but the other two are not as much. I know a lot of you have been finding me, so welcome. I'm sure that there is a lot of new viewers and a lot of you have been saying that you have people in your household with allergies or just doing a little bit more healthy eating and that's why you enjoy these videos. So I'm really glad that you're here because those are the cases in our house as well. Anyways, let's get rolling. I'm gonna show you what I've got going and what we're gonna make. out here and I'm not gonna go through my whole grocery haul but pretty much all of this is for these three dishes so I'm gonna be doing a chicken cordon bleu casserole a freezer burrito casserole and a Salisbury steak meatballs and then I'm actually going to be adding potatoes into that dish as well just to make it a more rounded dish so um, I picked up these easy foil uh, casserole pans and then I also got some heavy-duty aluminum foil and I'm gonna cover them and then just write on them what the instructions are you know to pull them out of the oven and get them heated up so to do this as quickly as possible I am going to try to use Use my time as wise as I can I'm going to take half of this meat and start frying it up for the burrito casserole and then I have chicken here for the chicken cordon bleu casserole that I'm going to actually put into my pressure cooker so it cooks up really quickly but I can still shred it and then I'll focus on the meatball dish
Okay, I've got all of the ingredients in here and as usual, I will leave the links in the description box for all of these recipes. Um, and the only modification I'm making today is I am adding the potatoes to the meatballs. So, uh, this is going to be mixed up by hand and then I'm going to put them on a cookie sheet at 400 in the oven. It actually worked out perfectly because all of my proteins were kind of made in a different way today. So this one's in the oven. I got the stuff on the stove top frying and then um, the chicken in the pressure cooker. So I just pulled the ground meat off of the heat. So that will be for the burritos. And then I've got about 16 minutes left on my pressure cooker for the chicken. Don't mind my ugly baking sheet. They get used really hard. But I'm gonna go ahead and put my meatballs on here and get those in the oven and then I'm not sure what I'll do next. I'll have to check all of my steps on my different recipes. Meatballs are in the oven. This here, I wanted to make a little side note. I did not salt at all, um, just because it's going to have a lot of other things with it and I don't like to over salt my stuff. Same with the chicken. There's gonna be a lot of salty stuff that goes along with it in the casserole. So I just put some water in there and did it on the poultry setting for about 20 minutes. It might be overkill for tenders, but we'll see. I always just kind of check it as I go. So next I'm actually gonna quickly cut up my potatoes that I'm going to be mixing in with the meatballs, get them going, and then I think we're going to assemble the the burritos. I think I can just go ahead and do it. I think I have everything ready. I just need to shred up some cheese. The great yellow sun is reflecting in your deep blue eyes. The day has begun. You spin around, you spin around, you laugh to yourself. And I see you shining every color Resting your head in my arms You sing la, 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 la. Since I'm gonna assemble it, assemble this um, I'm going to add in some chili beans and just mix it right in with the meat here in the frying pan. And then I'm going to go ahead and grease my pan that I have over there that I'm going to be putting all of this into. I would definitely say that this is the easiest recipe out of these three. Super, super simple, but also just filling and delicious. So basically the reason it's gluten free is because I'm going to be using corn tortillas. I would, if you have a gluten allergy, just double check your tortillas, make sure that they are truly corn, and then also double check your chili beans because sometimes they do add in, uh, you know, flour or just other little fillers that would have gluten in them. So I'm going to be putting a layer of this in and you could use the big tortillas. This is what my Aldi had. That's where I get most of my groceries. And I thought maybe I could actually make them fit in here better. So I'm gonna do a layer of those on the bottom, do the beans and the meat, another layer of the tortillas, and then top it off with salsa and cheese. And then um, when I pull this out and actually bake it up and we eat it, we'll probably also top it with some other things like sour cream and stuff like that.
Okay, so I've been letting this uh, decompress and I'm just gonna see, oh, there's a little bit left, I think. Not too much pressure left in there, so just let that kind of fizzle out for a second and then I'm gonna open this and check on the chicken, see if it's shreddable, and we can go from there. It's looking good. I can pretty much tell you that that is done. The meatballs are out. I'm kind of letting them cool down while I do this next step. So I shredded up the chicken, got the creamy part done with this, and now I'm going to be cutting up Swiss and then Black Forest ham. Um, if you guys are not familiar with chicken cordon bleu, it always involves something creamy, chicken, and some ham and Swiss cheese. It's that flavor combination. So I've never made this before. I have another way that I make chicken cordon bleu. If you guys have seen me do it, it's kind of like a stuffed chicken breast. Um, and that's my kind of my own recipe, but this one I am following. I'm gonna cut this up, mix it all together, and then this is pretty much ready to go into the pan. I'm going to top this off with a little bit more Parmesan and then I'm going to take some pork rinds and crunch them all up and then put them across the top just for a nice crunchy top. This is a really great gluten-free option. It's also very keto friendly, paleo friendly, and it gives you that great crunch. Okay, I've got my potatoes boiling back here, so I'm gonna get them soft, and in the same pan that I fried the burger in, I'm actually going to turn it on to medium heat and then put all of these sliced mushrooms in. So we're gonna be making the uh, mushroom gravy part that goes with the Salisbury steak meatballs, a <laughs> little bit of a mouthful. And so I'm gonna just put these in with a little bit of olive oil, cook them up. I got them pre-sliced today because I just thought it would save me a little bit of time. And I'm going to cut up the onion that will go into this next whenever we make the gravy part.
Okay, here they are. I could not be more happy with these meals. I can, like, if you guys could smell my kitchen right now, it smells so delicious with all of these flavors going on. And one other thing I don't think I mentioned earlier, the recipe for this calls for pre-made chicken. And I just prefer not to buy pre-made chicken unless I'm in a pinch. So that's why I went ahead and did it in my pressure cooker. So if you go look at that recipe and you wanna do the same thing I did, um, all I did is put it in my pressure cooker on the chicken setting for like about 20 minutes with about a cup of water. And it shredded up really nice as you guys saw. And these are gonna be so awesome for busy days and in fact, if we like these I think I may do this again in a few weeks and then like do two of each because they are just the perfect sized meals for our family so right now I'm going to cover them up each with tin foil and I don't have really any major instructions that needs to go on them but I'm going to do it anyway just in case my husband is the one that ends up putting them in the oven one night or something so for all three of them I'm gonna put them in the oven at 350 for until they're heated through so not a specific time just until it's completely heated through and all three of them would be uncovered whenever you heat them joining me today guys that feels great to put stuff in my freezer and know that I have easy meals whenever I need and it all looks so good it makes me so hungry right now but I wanted to say if you are new here don't forget to hit that subscribe button also don't forget to leave me some comments below I love reading your comments and responding to the ones that I can and don't forget to give this video a like and I'll see you guys in my next video